So it turns out that the greatest three-point shooter in NBA history has been playing his entire career with blurry vision. Steph Curry just recently started wearing contacts and now the entire NBA is I'm sure afraid that he's gonna get even better if that's possible with his vision corrected. What's up everybody, welcome back for those new. My name is Brian and I'm a doctor and a sports fan and it's my goal in this channel is to combine those interests to explain different sports injuries and sports medicine topics in a way that's easier for you to learn from and understand. Today we're gonna to talk about the recent news that Steph Curry has been dealing with a condition called keratoconus his entire life causing him to have an astigmatism or blurry vision and prompting him to start wearing contacts recently. We'll review the basic anatomy and function of the eyes so that you can understand how these different structures work, and then we'll explain what this condition called keratoconus is and what it means for his long-term health and career. Make sure you stick around till the end because we're gonna talk about a recently approved and studied therapy for this condition that's been shown in research to have some pretty positive impacts and hopefully prevent the need for further surgery, such as a corneal replacement later in life. As always, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of these videos and stay up to date and let's get started. Let's start off by breaking down some basic anatomy of the eye. There's a lot of other structures in here that we could talk about but we're going to focus on the main ones that are relevant for this discussion. This first layer that light passes through when coming into the eye is called the cornea and the cornea is that main structure that represents a lot of the focusing power of our eye. So whenever light enters into the eye it's coming in from all different directions and our eye structures have to focus that light down to a specific point so that the retina in the back of our eye can interpret what we're seeing. That cornea is the thin structure in the front that's made up of different collagen fibers and serves as one of the primary focusers of light in the eye. Next, light passes through the lens, which can be adjusted by different muscles in the eye based on how far things are from us and how we're trying to focus down. That light then passes through the big middle part of the eye called the vitreous humor, and then ultimately ends up back on the retina, which is the layer of cells on the very back of the eye that interpret what is actually being seen and send the signal along to the brain. As I said, it's important that the structures in the eye cause the light to bend in certain ways so that everything gets focused right on the back of the retina. If the focus point of the eye is somewhere in between, things will look blurry and out of place. And astigmatism is basically a description for any condition of the cornea or the lens that causes abnormal shape and changes that refractive property so that you end up with different focal points and everything not converging in the right spot on the back of the eye. Now, in Steph Curry's case, the specific condition that he was reported to have is something called keratoconus. This is an abnormality of the collagen in the cornea that causes it to get very thin at the outside portions and kind of bulge out towards the middle, giving it this very abnormal kind of protruding shape. There's no real specific known cause, but it's believed to have a lot of genetic tendencies. But as we age, people with this condition have abnormal shaping of that cornea, and it causes problems with the eye's ability to focus back in the proper spot on the retina. Now, as mentioned in the original reported story on The Athletic, this is a progressive condition. It's something that over time, the cornea continues to get thinner and thinner and loses its shape, and so requires different amounts and kind of types of treatment at various stages. It's reassuring that he's at the stage where he only needs contact lenses to correct the eye's ability to focus, but this condition is actually the leading cause of corneal transplants. And it's been estimated that somewhere around a quarter of people who have this condition ultimately require this down the road. Basically, you can only do so much with contact lenses before it gets to the point where you have to replace the actual whole cornea itself. So what does this mean for his career and his performance going forward? Well, I went back through and plotted here the actual field goal percentage, three-point percentage throughout his career, and really nothing's changed. Whenever someone has an astigmatism like this, things basically look a little bit blurry. Now everybody's saying, oh my gosh, he's gonna be an even better shooter, and that makes sense. If you're able to correct your blurry vision, things look sharper and clearer, you should perform better. The interesting thing about this though is if he's had some degree of blurry vision throughout his career, his brain and his mechanics have adapted to try to process how he's shooting based on what that visual input is that he's receiving. Once everything looks really clear, it's probably at first a little bit weirder and different for him to shoot because suddenly things look different. And so that pathway between what his brain is recognizing with the clearness of the rim and what his muscles are doing is gonna be a little bit different at first. Now, certainly it's better that his vision is gonna be clearer and so that should make it easier for him to shoot down the road, but he's probably gonna have a little bit of a period of trying to adapt to how much clearer everything looks. I think if we would have seen a downtrend in his shooting performance, we could say, oh gosh, he's wearing contacts now. That must mean that he's going to turn this around and start shooting better, but we really haven't seen a trend like that. So hard to predict really if he's gonna get all that much better or different. It's probably more of a fact that he just had difficulty with seeing things off the basketball court 
and got to the point where he was having some eye strain or some headaches and wanted to just wear these contact lenses for his everyday vision. As we said earlier, this is a progressive thing. It's something that over the years, it's going to continue getting worse and could lead to a point down the road where he would need surgery to actually replace the cornea. There's this new treatment that was just approved by the FDA a few years ago called corneal collagen cross-linking. And it's intended to try to slow or stop that degenerative process of the collagen in the cornea to delay progression of this disease. They basically take riboflavin, which is one of the B vitamins, and put it in the eye and then bombard the eye with some UV rays. And what this does is it causes some additional cross-linking between those collagen fibers in the cornea that ultimately allow them to be more strong and rigid so they don't get thin and deteriorate over time. And so it'll be interesting to see if this is something that Curry looks into down the road, depending on how quickly things progress. But with this condition, don't be surprised if we hear about it in the future, the possibility of him needing a corneal transplant later on in his life. So that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit different talking about something with the eye instead of kind of our typical joint injuries that we read about, but still hopefully interesting, still gives you a little bit of insight into something going on with one of these athletes. I hope you learned something. Let me know any comments or questions below. And until next time, thanks as always for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.